The process of splicing genetic information is like editing a take, much like joining pieces of magnetic tape or projection film. In cells, pre-messenger RNA splicing, the removal of non-coding introns, is a central step in gene expression. Splicing is a two-step chemical reaction and involves conserved RNA residues of the branch point sequence and the 5' prime and 3' prime splice sites found in the intron between two exons that will become part of the mature messenger RNA. The pathway is a complex cycle of RNA protein assembly, activation, splicing and disassembly. Distinct components of highly dynamic splices on machinery function in an orderly fashion and catalyze each two-step splicing reaction. Electron microscopy had partially captured the spliceosome and only in its general overall appearance during two decades of study before 2015 made difficult by its formidable dynamic nature. Visualization of the splicing cycle of each major complex involved in assembly, activation, splicing, branching, and ligation reactions and intron lariat spliceosome disassembly has now been achieved at high resolution and atomic detail. In 2015, the 3.6 angstrom resolution structure of the ILS complex solved in the Yigong Shudder Laboratory enabled atomic modeling of an intact spliceosome for the first time. The ILS catalyzed determination of subsequent models, and the splicing cycle would soon be revealed with unprecedented structural clarity. As the Xi lab modeled the A complex, with U1 and U2 SNRPs assembled on pre mRNA, and the U4, U6, U5 trisnerp, which assembles a central protein scaffold and RNA for future catalysis, by means of elucidating the pre B complex, which represents the first fully assembled spliceosome, and subsequent B complex, the pre catalytic spliceosome, that will undergo significant remodeling. The B act complex, the activated spliceosome, earliest to harbor the born active site. The B star, the catalytically activated complex, pivotal for understanding the branching reaction. The C complex, catalytic step 1 spliceosome with intron lariat product. The C star, step 2 catalytically activated spliceosome, which executes the exon ligation reaction. The P, post splicing complex important for understanding the transition from C star to the ILS complex. And the intron lariat spliceosome, providing insights into spliceosome disassembly and recycling mechanisms. At the heart of the spliceosome is a single active site where docking of substrates for the branching and exon ligation reactions takes place forming a distinct central element, the backbone of U6 RNA zigzags in a compact chamber, making five 180-degree turns, stabilized by positive charge of structural metal ions. The active site incorporates U2 U6 duplex and U5 nucleotides that orchestrate substrate anchoring, while catalytic magnesium ions stabilize or activate reactant moieties during catalysis. During splicing, the key catalytic U80 residue coordinates the M1 and M2 magnesium ions. Safeguarding a conserved active site, PRP8 protein harbors a positively charged cavity that anchors spliceosomal RNAs and functions as a central catalytic scaffold for splicing via a consort of domains. Organization of the active site after it is created is mostly invariant. During branching, catalytic M2 ion activates the BPS nucleophile as M1 stabilizes the 5' exon leaving group. Then at ligation, M1 activates this moiety while M2 stabilizes the leaving intron lariat. During splicing, the structural core surrounding the active site is rigid. It consists of U5, U6, and a stretch of U2 RNA, as well as 17 associated proteins, which stabilize these RNA elements and shape the active site. 
the full span of U6, most of U5, and 30 consecutive nucleotides of U2 RNA are precisely aligned. U2 sequences downstream of nucleotide 30 are mobile. They function to bind and deliver the BPS nucleophile to the active site for the branching reaction and to remove the resulting lariat junction prior to 3' splice site insertion for exon ligation. A comparative morph of PRP8 domains visualizes functional insights into the central hub and catalytic scaffold. During activation, the RNAs H-like, jab, switch loop, and other domains undergo pronounced rearrangements relative to the bulk of the N-terminal domain, reflecting unwinding of the U4-U6 duplex by BR2 helicase, stabilization of the 5' exon, and formation of the active site. The RNAs H-like domain then moves to recognize the intron U2 duplex while coordinating with proteins at the active site. It then acts to displace the duplex, allowing insertion of the 3' splice site. Finally, its movement and that of the switch loop culminates in the release of the 5' exon and mRNA. Dynamic splicing factors facilitate splicing by the spliceosome, in part by stabilizing the active site. In progressive manner, step 1 proteins insert to help place the branch point nucleophile closer to the 5' splice site cisyl phosphodiester bond or branching. Similarly, after significant remodeling of the spliceosome to dock the 3' splice site, step 2 proteins help stabilize the active site required for exon ligation. Helicase motors pull and unwind RNA at key conversion steps in the splicing cycle. They power spliceosome assembly steps, commitment to splicing and activation, progression through splicing reactions, and finally, disassembly of the spliceosome for the next cycle. Examination of elucidated complexes allows for comprehensive and stepwise visualization of pre-mRNA splicing operations at the level of RNA conformation. The 5' splice site and the lariat branch point sequence are detected via base pairing interactions with U1 and U2 RNAs. Incorporation of the trice nerve sets the stage for RNA rearrangements which will coordinate movement of these reactants toward the future active site. Upon release from U1 RNA, during the pre-B to B transition, 5' splice site and exon elements commence their advance towards this central meeting point. RNA remodeling releases U6 catalytic residues from sequestration by U4 RNA involving dramatic B to B act transition steps. Then, subsequent U6 RNA folding gives birth to the nascent active site. At the 5' end, Nearby U6 and U5 RNA elements pair to anchor the 5' splice site and exon. At the 3' end, the BPS reactant is brought closer, but it's held sequestered by U2 RNA. During the transition from B act to B star, RNA remodeling is again dramatic and stepwise, as movement of intron U2 duplex directs the BPS nucleophile into the active site. From B star to C, RNA remodeling is minor as the branching reaction gives rise to intron lariat. Major remodeling is again evident from C to C star as the lariat junction is removed from the active site to make room for the 3' splice site reactant. From C star to P, movements in spliceosomal RNAs are again minor as this reaction ligates the exons and gives birth to the mature, spliced mRNA. Finally, during the P to ILS transition, protein components act to eject spliced RNA from the spliceosome. Structural information deciphered across all major parts of the splicing cycle suggests a model of splicing and a series of functional steps in spliceosome assembly and remodeling. Initial events require recognition of 5' splice site and branch point sequence by U1 and U2 SNRPs notably involving base pairing interactions with U1 and U2 RNAs, which are stabilized by protein components. 
in the resulting A complex or pre spliceosome, the U1 and U2 SNRPs are linked, but they may be mobile relative to each other. Next, the trisnerp particle will associate with the A complex, followed by RNA helicase PRP28 and res complex, which begins to function to stabilize the pre mRNA. Forming a suitably inclusive cluster, the pre-B complexes relaxed interfaces between proteins and RNAs may facilitate remodeling in subsequent steps. It may enable local coordination of pre-mRNA splice site reactants and concomitant construction of the active site. During transition from pre-B to B complex, RNA helicase PRP28, which drives dissociation of U1 SNRP, likely orients and pulls on the pre-mRNA to free the 5' splice site and 5' exon elements and make them locally available for recruitment to the future active site. Association of B-specific factors may help stabilize the flexible pre-mRNA and to orient 5' elements, facilitating initial recognition by U6 RNA. Some series of commitment steps convert B-complex into activated spliceosome. BRR2 helicase unwinds U4-U6 duplex and releases U6 from sequestration, which enables local RNA folding required for future active site formation and tethering of 5' pre-mRNA. Recruitment of NTR and NTC components functions to stabilize the catalytic RNA core on the central hub and scaffold of the spliceosome, PRP8. Splicing factors complete formation of the B-act complex. The activated spliceosome is poised for splicing. However, initially, step one branching reaction cannot proceed. The two reactive moieties are separated by a shielded 50 angstrom gap, a structural feature presumably tailored for alternative splicing and selection of branch sites. RNA helicase PRP2 likely pulls the intron, triggering release of bound RES and SF3B complexes and exposure of BPS nucleophile, as well as removal of PRP11 and CWC24 that took part in maintaining catalytic dormancy. Recruitment of step 1 factors enables interactions at the active site, as the BPS nucleophile is brought progressively and gradually closer to the acceptor. As why JU2 is loaded into the spliceosome, it pushes the U2, BPS duplex, and the nucleophile to within 4.3 angstroms. In the final step, CWC25 is recruited, allowing fine adjustment of protein elements and the active RNA. The branching reaction can proceed, producing the intron lariat and freeing the 5' exon to set up exon ligation. RNA helicase PRP16 moves in and presumably pulls on the lariat, facilitating movement of PRP8 RNA's H like domain and dissociation of step 1 factors and relocation of the lariat junction. Recruitment of step 2 factors shares in selection and insertion of the 3' splice site into the active site. As a consequence of these choreographed events, exon ligation can be realized, producing the mature, spliced, messenger RNA. RNA helicase PRP22, which grabs and pulls the 3' exon, is required further to trigger spliced mRNA release. The intron lariat spliceosome will be subsequently disassembled by additional RNA helicase machinery, namely PRP43. Recruitment of NTR1 and NTR2 factors selects the spliceosome for disassembly. In one model, PRP43, activated by NTR1, may engage the available intron lariat. Henceforth, pulling may cascade and give rise to forces which dismantle all the components for recycling and or their specific functions. In an alternative model, the 3' end of U6 RNA is approximately 4 nucleotides away. Thus, PRP43 may likewise pull in the 3' to 5' direction to help dismantle this spliceosome. Despite vast evolutionary distance, yeast and human spliceosome machinery is decidedly similar in overall molecular morphology and operation. Remarkably, shared overall organizational principles are evident, including molecular interactions between key RNA and protein components, the active site conformation, 
and the position of catalytic metal ions. Fully comparing structures of yeast and human cycles may soon enable crucial insight. The positioning of the catalytic metal ions, as well as RNA triplex, suggests that the spliceosome shares common evolutionary ancestry with the self-splicing intron. Molecular organization of RNA elements in the catalytic core during reaction chemistry and formation of the Laria 2,5-phosphodiester bond reflect mechanistic similarities in splicing. Group 2 introns can encode a maturase protein with a domain architecture similar to PRP8, pointing also to common evolutionary origin. Increasingly implicated in many diseases is splicing that appears abnormal, as evidenced by the various patterns of mutations affecting steps in the splicing pathway. Improved understanding may offer a window to future therapeutic interventions. How splicing machinery functions in concert on non-trivial RNAs suggests additional mechanisms that may operate on a yet higher-order structural landscape. With what prospect for disease therapy and for understanding of biology and evolution?